folks, we are going to ask a question of Omar that actually came from you. Yes, the audience. If you would ever like me to ask Omar or frankly any of my millionaire guests a questions, leave comments below and we will do our best. So this one comes from Jeff Welsh. The question is, could you do an episode with Omar about the fear of success, failure, and judgment? I would love to hear more. Thank you for all you both do. So first off, James, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Omar and I appreciate it. Uh, let's get into it, Omar. Let's talk about the fear of success first. Talk about that. Well, those three are the biggest things that I took away from uh, um, from an event as well because we circled it, success, the judgment, the failure. But if we're going to start this off, um, that fear of success the reason there's a fear is because you have to be a different person. Um, the Michael Zuber from 10, let's say 15 years ago is not the same Michael Zuber. And the 20 year ago licensed agent, 21 years ago, licensed agent Omar is not the same person today. Yeah. The activities might be the same but mentally you're changing. This is why a lot of people are scared of success. I was myself scared of success as well because I didn't know what to expect. I also thought five grand a month was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I thought $3,000 a month when I had no, no house payment. I just had a car payment. I mean, th th that's where it's at. I mean, that fear of success to me uh, it is, it's an evolution, first of which, and embrace it. Give yourself some grace along the way, for sure, right? Because I'm sure, Michael, you could, you know, you could add to this absolutely because you've been through a lot of stuff. And and that, for for me, the that fear of success is heavy because yeah. you're trying to compete. You're trying to compete with other fucking people that don't mean shit in your life, anyways. To be completely honest, so whatever pathway you're on, stick to your path because there's so much noise that we're trying to be like somebody else. We we can model ourselves after certain people, yes, okay? But you you are not somebody else. You are authentically Michael Zuber. You're authentically mm -hmm. Omar Alfaro. You're authentically Jeff, I believe, right? So- James. James, James. You're authentically James. Right. And that's yeah. Good. This one, this one's, this one hits me hard because again, I'll just have a moment of of kind of vulnerability. Um, anytime I'm doing something where success is piling up, I almost self sabotage. And frankly, mm -hmm. if we're truly honest, I have self sabotaged in the years. Like for example, um, heading into the pandemic. So we're talking before it really started. Uh, I was doing a lot of running. Uh, I was, uh, I think I was, I don't know, 48 at the time or something. And I was my lowest weight since high school. You know, had six pack, you know, all of that. And I remember the morning I looked at the scale and saw a number that I'd never seen before or hadn't seen in decades. And I got nervous because it was like, I almost had permission to get off my diet, get off this, get off that. And sure enough, Next thing you know, I'm eating cake or having dessert, which I hadn't freaking touched in ever. And guess what, Omar? The six pack went away. <laughs> what the hell? So I, I am by no means perfect, right? I uh, I don't know if it's everybody that does this, but yeah, I can, I can work. I mean, there's no question that that's a superpower. But once I, once I work and I quote unquote get to some finish line, mm -hmm. that mental fortitude or attitude that I just grind on day after day once that is beaten or victory is claimed, I'll self-sabotage with the best of them. It's it's wild. I still do it today. It's crazy. Hey, you know what? You you brought something up. That self-sabotage is absolutely insane because it, it happens. You know, you, you get comfortable. You're like, oh, I hit this marker. I'm solid. I hit this goal. I'm yeah. solid. I got 10 doors. I'm solid. I got yeah, then, whatever oh. that is for you. You know, that is a weakness of mine. Absolutely. Well, now oh. let's get to the uh, fear of failure and I'll go first on this one. Cause it's okay. really easy. Um, 
I actually thrive in failure better than success, as I just admitted. I don't do well with success. But I do believe and I operate at a level that the only time you truly fail is when you give up. Mm -hmm. So I don't fail. I may have missteps. I may learn lessons. I may this, I may that. But for whatever reason, my psyche, my youth, my baggage, my whatever, I'm used to getting my ass kicked, but I don't give up. Mm -hmm. And I do believe the only time you fail is when you give up. So it's really weird to say out loud, I am comfortable in what most people would call failure because I'll out, I'll out fucking work you. There's, there's just like, it's not happening. You're not going to outwork me. You might kick my ass today, but I'll show up tomorrow. Let's I'll kick my go. ass tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll be back for the, I'll be back for day three. And not Michael people- Zuber said, oh, I'll fucking work you. I will <laughs> outwork you. That came from Michael Zuber. You owe us a dollar. I do probably 10 bucks. I'll pay 10 bucks for that one. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just how I operate, right? I got to get angry. That's just like when I get angry, or heated or whatever you would call that. Yeah. I, I lose my ability to filter, but yeah, I, I, I am more comfortable in failure in working than I am success. I get to some point that I put out there. It's, I don't do well with that. So that's how I, I am not afraid of failure because I, I will show up the next day. So that's how I treat failure. But what about you? You know, uh, good, good point. Uh, Michael, that, that fear of failure is, that, that journey that you know that's coming, okay? Everyone knows the fear of failure is coming, okay? It's just a matter of when, and, and you don't know when it's gonna happen either, okay? But if you play with fire long enough, if, you, if you're in success long enough, it's part of the ingredient that you are gonna be faced with, okay? So just knowing that, it's the same thing when you drive your vehicle. You know that you're gonna have to put gas in it one day, or you know that you're going to get a flat tire one day. It's not if, it's when you're going to get a flat tire. Okay? Yeah. So that avenue, if you now program that in your mind about like, hey, that fear of failure is coming, get prepared for it. Michael embraces it. I myself embrace it because it's a lesson that I'm going to not do again. You know? And us as investors, uh, we we face failure all the time. The failure of losing money, the failure of not getting contracts signed. The failure of not not making what we were going to be making on this split. And now it's like, damn. Or like owning that $100,000 loss, the big loss that we are going to be faced with or that we were just faced with. Mm -hmm. How do you come back from that? That's the question. You can get knocked down. Everybody knows this. You can get knocked down, but it's how fast you get back up, right? And there's, I, I read it somewhere. It's easy, right? It's if you feel that it's difficult to obtain success, it's going to be difficult because it is. But I will tell you this. If you think that that success is hard, wait till you face failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I operate so much better. Yeah, yeah. So expect it. Look for it. Encourage it. Uh, The best people I know have failed the most times, but they get up. So plan for it. Right. Don't do it on purpose by any stretch, but no, it's coming. It comes to all. I fail every day, every week, every month still. It's okay. Just keep, keep moving forward. And then the one that's probably more relevant today than maybe it was 20 years ago, fear of judgment, fear Uh of judgment. What do you got? That's uh, hmm. okay. That fear of judgment. That's everybody right now. Okay. There's only a select few. You know, and subconsciously we do see um, us being judged, okay? Everybody judges a book by its cover, okay? I don't care who the fuck you are. You're judging someone, period, and the story, okay? And when you are in the position of getting judged or that judgment that's based up, that's put upon you, man, it does something to you because this is why. You don't post. This is why you don't talk about your losses. This is why you don't um, want to be all over social media. This is why you don't like to have conversations on social media because the fear of judgment on what you're saying, how to say it, how you look. Are you that well versed? Are you that seasoned? And because we see this everywhere on social media that you're like, well, how do how do they do it so easily? 
right? Because they feel the same shit that we feel, but we just put one foot after another, after another, after another. It's super challenging. It's super dif- difficult. But guess what, guys? Regardless, in your in your lifetime, listening to this freaking show, you will always be judged. You will always have that fear of judgment, right? Mm-hmm. But it's what you do with it. Because do they dictate what you need to do? No. Michael does not, and I'm going to say this, Michael does not care what you think of him because he has one purpose is to allow more people to get in rooms to understand one rental at a time and how simple it is. All you just got to do is the fucking work. Okay. There you go. Exactly. All you got to do is the work, but yeah, I get, yeah, yeah. But one more thing, I'm sorry, Michael, but this is a huge part of it. That judgment aspect of it will either bury you Mm. if you let it, or it will give you fuel because yes. what do people say? People say like, I'm going to prove you fucking wrong. Yes. Why? Because they judged you. Why? Because they talk shit. Why? Because they wish. And, and, and this is the thing. When people say things that they say, they don't know the whole story. Everyone's dealing with something in their own life. Be yeah. fucking nice to people. That's it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Jud- judgment. Gary V does a lot of good stuff, right? Judgment comes in all forms, uh, whether it's Sally Pants, one, two, three, some no name or your mom. Right. I mean, judgment can come from lots of different places. So, you know, how do you handle that? I think it's really weird, you know, being on social media in, in a de- decent way for the last four years on YouTube. Um, You're going to everything is judged. I mean, I've everything. had people comment about this or that or. I mean, it's going to come. So as a creator, as my mission is to help people. And because that mission needs to get out in public, people are going to judge. So there's a couple of rules that I have now because I don't want to live in a world of negativity. Some judgment is pure toxic. Pure. Pure. So all I do is block, delete, move on. I don't give them a moment's notice. Some judgment comes from people's baggage, but I deem as is, um, you know, not toxic, but like disagree or say I'm wrong, but as long as it's done politely with context, dude, I'm wrong all the time. Just as move a, on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the last thing is, is, you know, when you do enough content, you're going to, I get notes almost every day now saying you changed my life. So I can tell you with all honesty, I get one note like that a day. I can deal with 20 negative things. For sure. 100%. It's a one to 20 ratio. Uh-huh. And if you're just starting out in your social media game or your, your investing game or your health game or your exercising game, there will be a point in time where you start getting feedback that's positive and there is, it's addicting. There's nothing like it. So a lot of people say judgment because it starts usually with negativity. But there is positive judgment. Like, Michael, you've changed my family's future. I'm like, I can take a lot of shit when you, you know, when I hear somebody tell me I've changed their future. So I want to tell you it's worth it. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing magic, James, about Omar or I. We are both afraid of success. We're afraid of failure. We deal with judgment. It's it's all out there. But we both recognize it and we get up and do it again. That's That's what makes the best the best. So, Omar, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, spot on. I mean, James, at the end of the day, nobody else pays your bills but you. Nobody else performs for the family but you. What are you leaving for your family, providing you have one? If you don't, then it's your mom. And if you and if that's not the case, it's your significant other. It's your 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 friend, your family, your cousin, your brother, your sister. You're doing it for you. Regardless, I'm doing it for my family, my kids, my lady, my oldest. I'm doing it for them because when I'm gone, they're going to be set. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in the meantime, if I can impact a few more people like yourself, you wanted to talk about this, we're talking about this. I appreciate you bringing this on too, Michael, because this is phenomenal. Because now we're talking to James and everybody else that's going to be listening to this uh, to this episode. And it's it's fire. Because we all deal with it. 
You're absolutely right. So, guys, if you want to ask Omar a question, leave comments below. I will uh, make sure he sees them, and we will talk about them next week. Omar, you are amazing. Thanks, buddy. Let's go.